Hey everybody, this is John Lewis, registered nurse here. Still getting used to saying that, but it's getting better with time. I'll get used to it. Anyway, today I'm going to talk about how to get your first nursing job out of school. Now, I'm going to discuss my experience, so hopefully you can find that information helpful. And also, if you like the content that I've been putting up, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out as far as getting seen and hopefully getting information out to more people if possible. But let's get started. So one of the first things is definitely have an idea of what unit you're interested in. Typically, for my, my program, we were on a med surg unit for the first three semesters. And then once I got to my practicum, I got to see an ICU. But something that I learned in nursing school is that you have to be an advocate for yourself. If you want to see anything, if you want to do anything, it's definitely up to you to make sure you get to do those things. Because if your instructors never know, then they'll never offer those opportunities. So something I did during my second semester, I, I asked my clinical instructor, could I possibly spend a day at the ICU? So, you know, I didn't think much of it. You know, I didn't know if I'd be able to get there. But luckily, she had a friend in the ICU and she let me spend one of the days there. So it was really eye opening and kind of solidified my want to be in an ICU setting because I enjoyed it when I was there. So that's definitely something important to do. Now, if you're looking at specialty areas like the emergency room or ICU or NICU, anything like that, you probably want to look for whatever cities you're interested in. You want to look at who has a nurse residency program. Nurse residency programs are typically allow you to go into specialty areas as a new grad. Uh, so it's something something that can get you to a position you want to be in instead of having to go through like a year of med surge experience or however it works. So what I did, I was looking at places here in Georgia, also out of state, and I just wrote a list of all the residency programs that were at hospitals that were interested in. Now, what I did, though, after you find a list of them, definitely you want to go through and see how the programs work. You want to look at like the timing on them. Some of them may be six months, some may be a year, you know, however they work. You want to see what you'll learn in it. Some of them may be didactic in, in, the, cla didactic in the classroom. Some of them will just uh, be on the floor. Uh, so you just want to look and see if the program interests you and you feel like you'll get what you need out of it. Of course, you can find a uh, uh, you, you definitely have a residency program, even if you do med surge, if that respective hospital has that. But um, but typically, it's going to be good if you want to go in specialty areas, especially. But next, I would, uh, as far as after you decide what hospitals and everything you want to do, uh, you want to apply to, I would definitely look at forums like All Nurses or on Reddit and see how these residency programs are. You can look at the hiring process, how long it approximately took or when you need to apply and all these things. Of course, typically on the career side, they will have dates you need to apply to and deadlines, but it's good to see kind of the process and see how how it worked. And also, it's kind of interesting where you see people, they go through, you know, they're applying, they're all nervous about getting the interview, then going through the interview and see who gets hired. Those are pretty fun. You can follow those in forums, but that, that's something I enjoyed. But it's good to see how that process works to make sure you're kind of on time with everything. So after you get everything together, you know what hospital you want to go to, well, know what hospitals you're interested in and everything, you definitely want to prepare your resume and cover letter. This is something you probably should do as early as possible. You can always kind of add to it. Uh, because I'm an older student, I was luckily had a resume template that I used that I liked and I had a general setup. But so it was easy for me to kind of plug and play, uh, plug and place everything that I've done, like uh, new, op new things I've done being in nurse school, you know, three semesters, four semesters, and things like that. And I just updated as new things came along, new jobs, new levels of experience, new interactions, anything like that. You just update your resume constantly. Now, to do a resume, if you've never done one, you want to definitely check with your career center for your school. Most schools have a career center where they might have a template you can follow, or my school in particular, they had a PowerPoint that gave you information as far as how to build a resume and also how to write a cover letter. But another thing you want to look at, which is a really great resource, is your nursing instructors. Definitely find a nursing instructor that you enjoy, get along with, and maybe have them look over your resume to see how it looks. Because they can give you pointers because I'm sure they've either written a lot of resumes or they may be into hiring and they've done, done some hiring of nurses. And so they will be able to give you some good pointers on what they look for in a good resume as a nurse. Hey everyone, I just wanted to stop here and give you an idea of how my resume looked that I sent out to different hospitals. I had the basic template before I actually started college, but I learned a lot of things about what to include in it. The order of my information is done on purpose. 
it's listed in a way to try and grab attention. Since I will be hired as a new nurse, it will be important to show what skills I've gained that could be a benefit to whatever facility I'm at. Also, if you have a lot of job history, it is important to list relevant versus regular work experience. This way, you can make sure that you don't have a long list of work experience that doesn't have any direct relevance to nursing. You may also want to consider not listing jobs if they are from a long time ago or show no benefit. Your resume should typically only be one page long. If you don't have much work experience, then I would suggest using whatever you can when filling out a resume. Examples would be like, have you done any volunteer work or were you the leader of a certain club or team during school? Did you play any sports while you were in school, which is an insanely tough thing to do. So make sure you include things like that because it shows how much of a hard worker you are. You can still make a good resume even without having much experience. It's just about how well you're able to tailor your experiences to healthcare and nursing. Especially make sure you're cognizant of the wording you use because it's really important. You can look up plenty of lists of words that show strength or weakness. Those can most likely also be found with your career center as well. So this is my my resume. Feel free to pause if you'd like more time to see it or want to try and use it as a at, use my template as a guide, but you're also welcome to look up. There are plenty of other nursing specific resumes out there, so you can try to use those as well. But I hope you enjoy it, and I'll continue with the video. So, uh, and also another thing you want to do is obtain references. That's something that a lot of people weren't doing uh, that I noticed, but something I, I, I did even before I got into nursing school, if I got along really well with the teacher I would, or instructor or professor or anything like that, I would ask, would you mind be a reference for me in the future? The reason I did that at first is because you usually need them for scholarships and things like that, but also it's really good for after that because a lot of jobs are going to ask for references. And if all your references are people you know, that's not good. You want professional references. So you definitely want uh, people... Uh, bosses that you work for, supervisors, managers, things like that. But also, if you have something in the nursing field that can say, hey, this is a good person, you definitely should consider hiring them. That's a good resource. So I asked every instructor in nursing school after the at the end of the semester, would you mind being a reference for, for me in the future? And I never got a no from the ones that I asked. So it's definitely important to do that. So after you've done all of that, um, you'll probably be in your last semester. You're most likely going to apply before the end of your semester. I actually had my job. I graduated in December, but I got my job the very uh, first week of November. That's when I got hired. So you want to definitely look at the times to apply. Some places have them six months in advance. Some places only have them at a really short window because they're super busy uh, and they get a lot of applications. So they may have it only for like a week or two days. I've even seen if you get at the really, really big hospitals. And so you want to make sure you're definitely on time, but you want to apply to all the hospitals that you're interested in. Definitely don't sell yourself short and only apply to one hospital. I know a lot of people, they have hospitals that's their, that's their dream hospital. You know, they definitely want to work here in this particular unit, but you don't want to sell yourself short that only you only have one option. And if you don't get that option, then you're just out of luck. You know, you don't have any where to go and, and you may, may have to take a job that you're not interested in. So definitely find multiple places that you're interested in working or maybe have nurse residency programs that you could go to and apply to all of them at the same time because you can, you'll do multiple interviews. Some of them have time frames as far as accepting jobs, but don't worry about that. You want to give yourself as many opportunities as possible. Also something that you might find if you have an interview at one place and it might not be your favorite choice, but that'll get you used to having uh, taken interview questions and it can kind of give away some of those nerves that you might have. So after you've done that, apply to hospitals and, and uh, apply to all the hospitals and you're waiting for to hear a response from them. Definitely practice interview questions. That's something that I did. I just looked up it, uh, random interview questions. Now, I'm not an interview expert, so definitely look at there are some really good resources on YouTube as far as interviewing in general. Also, uh, there, uh, there are ones that specifically tailored to nursing. So definitely look at those resources, but uh, definitely practice interview questions and and that'll get you used to them. Don't try to do things verbatim and rehearse answers so much because you want to sound organic. You don't want to sound rehearsed because that just looks bad because, you know, you want some you want to get somebody's personality and you can't get a personality to a rehearsed person. So you just want to have an idea how you answer the questions. And that way it comes out more organically when you do them. Also, 
when you're practicing these interv interview questions, um, make sure if it's about experiences that you write down, uh, write down good experience that you had either through uh, through uh, externship or through clinical or anything like that. So what I did is I, if I had good stories about like when I didn't get along with somebody or uh, have you faced some difficulty with the patient or anything like that? I wrote down wrote down those kind of stories because I knew I could bring them back up in interviews. So I wrote down those type of stories so that I can use them again in interviews. One in particular that I think I use almost everyone is that during my externship that I had, I had a uh, had a client who was always on the call light, always on the call light. And what I found out is that what I did is basically. I didn't get mad at him or anything like that, but in working with him and being calm with him and just talking with him, I found he was just really nervous about a procedure that they were having in the future. So in talking with them, by the end of the night, they were really calm about it and they were not on the call light as much and hopefully I helped them out. So that's one of the stories that I used a lot and just look for any experiences like that, especially like conflict or anything like that, because Conflict is a big thing in nursing, especially between coworkers as well as with uh, patients. So you want to write down any experiences where there was a good resolution and what you did in those situations. Next, I would say on the interview day, you want to make sure you're dressing in professional attire. I can't really speak to girls what that is. Definitely look that up. I believe it's just like a nice blouse and maybe a skirt or, or some pants or something like that. But as far as guys, like I wore a suit. I wore a whole suit and a tie and all that stuff. Depending on your state, I know some states are a little more lax than others, but I think that's the most professional you can go as a guy. So I wore a whole suit and tie and I got compliments on it. So that was good. Um, it definitely sticks out that if you dress in nice attire uh, and that's kind of like a baseline thing for any interview you ever have. You want to do that. And you also want to make sure you arrive 10 to 15 minutes before your interview. All of mine were on video because of COVID, of course. But even with that, I still was on the call 10 to 15 minutes before it started because you don't want to run to a situation where you're like right on time and maybe you might be there after uh, the person you're interviewing with. Or if you're late, you know, that, that sets a bad tone because if you're late for an interview that you've known about for a few weeks, what are you going to do when you're on a unit? What are you going to do when they need you or something like that? You know, they don't want somebody who's not going to be punctual. So definitely do that. As far as in the interview, uh, don't be afraid to take your time in answering questions. I know long pauses are bad, but if you have to take five or 10 seconds to think about something, because you can practice as much as you want to, but there still may be a curveball that's particular to that hospital that they ask. So you want to go that you want to Take some time to gather your thoughts and make sure you give a good answer. So so it's okay to take a pause. And also something that you can do is if you really are messing up and 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 doing badly on something, it's okay to be like, I'm sorry, I kind of messed up there. Would you mind if I start over and answer that question again? I believe most places would most most interviewers would do that because you know, they know you're nervous. They know you're struggling you know you're probably in your last semester of school so you got a lot of things on you so it's definitely a lot of stress and if you do that that it also also sticks out probably in their mind because as a nurse you're definitely gonna have to go back and fix things that, are, that were a problem so so if you're willing to do this in an interview when you're really nervous and all that stuff i think it just looks good that you're willing to realize your mistake take some time and try to do better so i think that might stick out Another big thing is don't be afraid to ask questions. And actually, it's really important that you do ask questions because while you may know a lot about the hospital from the outside, you definitely want to probably get a sense of how the unit is or how you may be managed or what time frame you need to expect a response or anything like that. Everything I've saw usually encourages questions because it also does show your excitement about wanting to work there. Because if you want to know information about that, that means you're really invested in being with that unit or program or hospital or anything like that. And what I did, I had a list of five, six questions that I asked each interviewer. And I actually wrote down their answers because I went back and looked at them. And so that that's what I did. And it actually really helped me and helped me make my decision because I did have an externship, which is a really good way. That's kind of a good, really good way to get you from the door. I ended up not staying with the hospital that I got the externship at, but but uh, writing down those questions to help me make my decision when choosing a different hospital system system to go with. So that's something really important. And then you reach the last point. Of course, you got to wait for a response. 
So you definitely should ask the question, how long will it be for a response? And that way you know how long you're waiting and, and you aren't just sitting on your email refreshing, constantly waiting for something. So you have a good time frame. Now, usually they're pretty vague. One of them, one of them that I applied for said uh, two weeks. One of them said uh, maybe in a couple of days, but it might be a week. So definitely don't sit there just refreshing email. It's going to answer is going to come when it comes. And you can also look at forms again because you'll see how long it took people to get uh, get responses. I definitely wouldn't look at uh, COVID time, though. Like I wouldn't look at early 2020 for responses. I would look at like the years prior because that's going to be more in line with how their normal time frames go because COVID really messed stuff up because I knew people that were hired probably um, before the semester started and they were supposed to start in June, but then because of COVID, it was pushed back to August and even further. So you definitely don't want to look at that. But if you're looking at form, stop it, get some help. Look at 2019 and maybe 2018. I usually don't try to go back further than that because they probably have changed processes in like two to three years. It probably is not the same. But anyway, that's going to be my tips as far as how to find your first job in nursing. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you have any questions about anything or need more information about things maybe I did, definitely put a comment down in the comment section. And again, if you enjoyed the content, please like and subscribe. I'm definitely trying to grow this channel. It's done. Yes, Mr. Frodo. It's over now. Uh, my goal is to try to reach 100 subscribers, let's see, probably a good time maybe by March or the end of February. I do start my residency program at the beginning of March, so um, I might put some little different videos there of how that's going when it starts up, so that's pretty interesting. But I do want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.